Hello, everybody. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me in chat and see this screen. Perfect, perfect. So, yeah, hello if you're in chat right now. I'm recording this and I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel as well. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello as well. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope everyone had a good week. But let's get right into it. We're just going to re review some price action, review a long I took today. Um, and yeah, and why I favored longs as well. So basically just the <clears throat> premise of why I favored longs. So if you look here, right, so this is a four hour chart and we're going to go down to the lower time frames as well, of course, but there's no inefficiencies. So I'll talk about this in a bit. Obviously we have this large inefficiency here and we'll talk about why and when I kind of assumed that wasn't going to be delivered to. Okay. But above market price, and below in this structure on the four hour chart, there's no inefficiencies, right? Obviously we can see we have this order block here at median threshold with just below that nice support today. Okay, but let's go to an hourly. So this is where we can start to see more of an idea of what is going on. Okay, so this was the only cause for concern in terms of a long. So we have this clear inefficiency here with this swing low. So previous day low, Thursday's low. But if, as you can see, we already have a stop rate. All right. And where does price go? Exactly to mean threshold of this hourly order block here. Okay, so mean threshold is 451275. You can see it on the right. And the low of this candle, if you look at the top left of the screen right now, is that exact number 451275. Okay, but again, before open today, I think I posted in chat, <clears throat> I wanted to monitor this fair value gap and this one. Obviously, we smashed through this one and we wicked below this, but the bodies tell the story, the wicks do the damage. Where is this wick going? Exactly to mean threshold of this hourly order block. Okay. Um, I'm sure all, if not most of you in the call right now, were watching price this morning. It was gross. I got stopped on a small loss going long. Um, and I'll talk about why I took the trade and why obviously nobody wants to have a losing trade, right? We all just want to be nasty, hundred percent win rate, but it's not realistic. Right. And even though it was a loss, all my, you know, my analysis checked out, everything looked good for a long. And it was just one of those times where it was a long, but we caught an afternoon long as well. And of course I'll talk about that. Um, and also after we go through ES, I want to go through ES first because it's what I traded and what I trade. Um, but I really favored buy side because of NASDAQ. So we'll go to NASDAQ after I get through ES as well, and then we'll go through dollar. All right. So first off, we see this algorithmic signature here, this low, the 9 a.m. low. And again, this is an hourly chart here, but we get the signature here, respect to this mean threshold and the bodies closing within this hourly inefficiency. If you're following on your own charts, it is from yesterday, Thursday, November 16th at 3 p.m. All right. Um, but I favored buy side one. And again, it was a little clearer on NASDAQ. And we did end up getting this on NASDAQ. But also just the basic premise was that we fell just short of Wednesday's high right before New York opened. So this is the 8 a.m. candle. So we ran right to it. Obviously, you can see we didn't get it we can still be profitable, right? And we saw NASDAQ get that and we'll go look at that after, all right? But before we go to the next uh, lower time frame, if you did not watch my immediate rebalance video, go check that out. It is a very, very powerful tool, okay? But you can see the high of this candle here. So the high of the 11 a.m. candle from today is 4522.25. If the immediate rebounds formation is that three candle formation, we're looking at that third candle to see if it wants to go into the upper wick of that first candle. The low of the third candle is 4522.25. So the exact high of this wick. We get that immediate rebounds, but also where is it occurring? The high of this fair value gap, again, look over here, is 4522.5. This immediate re rebounds is one tick in there. So it's coming back for the immediate rebounds, but also it's right at the top of this hourly inefficiency. And again, 
the cause for concern was that we could come down here if they wanted to short it, right? If they wanted to send it below this previous day low and get to this um, hourly inefficiency down here. But once we have this signature here, we've swept this sell side and we're starting to see these things occur, it's reasonable, reasonable excuse me, to expect some sort of push and we'll see how we can kind of refine that on the lower time frames. As my dog's going crazy in the background. Okay, but as well as that low of day being, let me go back up to it, the hourly chart, mean threshold of this bullish order block. Using that logic from the breaker uh, video I posted, we want to take what for targeting purposes, for places we could reverse? High, low, higher, high. This is that bearish breaker, right? And we're taking the A to B leg. That's where we're anchoring our fibs, okay? Look at what low of day is. 45.12.75, low of day here. 45.12.75, exactly. So negative 2.5, again, standard deviations, I'm sure a lot of traders use it different ways, but this is kind of just a tool I use to add to context, add to confluence, reversal areas, along with higher probability liquidity pools. And I apologize for my dog right now, I'm sure. Can you guys hear? She's going crazy. But okay, so this was also on top of that hourly order block. This is that same area, this higher confluence after we have this sweep right here. It's reasonable to expect that this is going to go higher because why? On the 15 minute, there's no inefficiency down here as well. So just like the four hour, just like the hourly, there's no inefficiency down here. So price does what? Moves to liquidity or moves to inefficiency. Okay, so as long as it's showing a willingness to not want to go below here, below this higher time frame PD array, right? And reach for this sell side and this hourly inefficiency, we start to get those bullish signatures, right? At a place negative 2.5 where we could reverse right but we have low high lower low so what does that make this a bullish breaker again bread and butter target we're taking our fib from that a to b leg low high right here negative one is that bread and butter target and you can use this logic on multiple time frames to gauge narrative to gauge where price is likely or potential um, to deliver to okay so it would have been nice to see es here get to this 15 minutes Sibi as well, All right? But note what time this is occurring. This is 1 p.m., right? We close above this 15 minute breaker, come back down to what? Right around mean threshold, we wick below it here, but we're bouncing out this tiny inefficiency here, okay? Right here. So, on top of the fact that there's no inefficiency down here to balance out, after we get above this breaker and balance this out, and I'm gonna delete it now just for clarity. We had all this chop this morning. We've had the stop raid. If we're bullish, we don't wanna see it get back down into here because we've already had all this sell side delivery, buy side, back and forth, back and forth. We wanna see this be balanced so we can go get buy side. So again, Note this is at 1 p.m. So multiple things are occurring at 1 p.m. What did we see already? That hourly immediate rebounds at the top of this fair value gap. 1 p.m. Coming back down into this 15 minute breaker. Okay. Now down to a five minute. What's occurring here? We can refine this bullish breaker, low, high, lower, low. This is that bullish breaker, you can see again, we're just wicking below mean threshold of the breaker. But what do we have here? We have a buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency, right? So a BISI here, and then we have a SIBI here. Once we reclaim that, we're back above this breaker, we wanna see this BPR respect price, okay? Because why? Like I said, we've had up and down delivery all morning. If we're bullish, we've already had the stop rate, there should be no need for price to get back down in here. Even on the five minute chart, where's the inefficiency here? There is none, okay? We've already tapped into mean threshold of this breaker. 
Once we're above this BPR, we want to see its support price. Yes, we wick below it, but the bodies tell the story. Okay, the wicks do the damage. You can see we come down into it right here, right back down to the very top of this bullish breaker. I'm going to put that back in the chart and this balance price range here. Okay. Again, if you're doing projections, so back to the 15 minute, we can watch this level 45, 33, 25 for targeting purposes, but you can refine these levels and look to see where these standard deviation points are. If they're around these buy side liquidity pools here or up here. Okay. Let's go back down to the, or to the one minute, I should say. Okay, so now starting at the hourly, right? This was my entry right here. And I should talk about the small loss I took this morning. I forget where it was. I should have had it on the screen. It might have been this breaker here. I think it was this, this breaker here. Yeah, I believe it was. Okay, and I'll, I'll double check after this, but um, you can see obviously we got this low, right? As well as this low, so relative equal lows. Tapping into what? Look at the right. This is that mean threshold exactly of the hourly order block. Okay, signature there, stop raid, right? And again, we've had all of this up and down delivery here, right? So if we were gonna target buy side, once we clear this structure, we don't really want price to dig back down into it. It shouldn't need to, right? There's not really any inefficiencies down here. We have this one here, it's already been balanced, right? And then as we scroll to the right, you can see what 1150 macro begins to spool, right? So I did not enter during the 1150 macro, but when you're looking at macros, you can, one thing I always do is just ask myself, what was the function of the macro? So if I didn't enter in it, I'm thinking, was there a function? Did price begin to spool a certain direction or was it, did it provide a setup for price to return to and then begin to spool? Um, or if it doesn't provide a clean setup or begin to spool, it's probably manipulation and seek and destroy likelihood. Um, it's increased that probability of it being seek and destroy. But as you can see, we do in fact get that move to the upside, the spooling of price at 1150, right? And what does lunch macro do? Obviously no one was really profitable in here, but shorts were profitable, right? From 930 open here. So the lunch macro, lunch session, I should say, is more likely to run against those profitable shorts from here, okay? But we have what? Low, high, lower, low. This is your breaker you can use the entirety of these consecutive candles, but I'm just trying to keep it organized here, All right? This highest up close candle is a breaker. Once you close above it, does it support price? Yes, okay. This is what we want to see as well. There's no, we have this little inefficiency, but we've already spent all of this time in here. So it's best if an inefficiency, especially a small one like this stays open, okay? So this bullish breaker is supporting price as we head towards 1 p.m. Now, what occurs at 1 p.m.? So I was I was long off this, right? And my stop was here. Okay, this low. Why? Because we've already dug into this breaker. We've already had this back and forth delivery. I don't think we need to go back down here, especially to lower day, because we've had the algorithmic signature. So I wanna see them attack price. I already see this bullish breaker supporting price before my entry. So when it returns there, I'm back in. Okay. Then what happens? 1 PM. What do we get? We get that hourly immediate rebalance. So again, reminder, the high of this wick is 45, 22, 25. That is noted right here. The hourly candle at 1 PM opens and we get that hourly power of three open low distribution. Okay. Where is the low form? Some random place? No, that immediate rebalance. That's when we start to get speed. Okay. So again, if you watch that immediate rebalance video I posted, this was a great example of that. 
so we can see the immediate rebounds on higher time frames and then go and look within those wicks on the lower time frames, whether you're executing on 30 second, one minute, five minute, whatever. But it's a it's a useful tool, the higher time frame um, immediate rebalances in terms of speed, what to expect, when to expect these things. Okay. On top of this, we have this buy side liquidity pool, right? These equal highs here. All right. And these are more of the kind of technical things you can look for. But if we have this low, so this entirety of the structure, right? Low, high, lower low. The highest up close candle in this structure. I'm going to zoom in here for everyone. The highest up close candle is where? It's this candle here. But we have consecutive candles. So we can use that entire string of candles here, right, for projections. So you could use, right, the entirety of the A to B leg, but you can refine it as well to look for more confluence with just these consecutive candles. So if you take this high to this low, what do you get? Exactly that buy side liquidity pool. So I'm going to put it top, middle, so you can see it. Buy side liquidity, <clears throat> excuse me. These equal highs, 45, 31, 50. Negative two standard deviation, exactly 45, 31, 50. Okay? So this is what you want to see with these standard deviation projections from this A to B leg, but you can also refine it, like I said, with these consecutive up close candles. So if this, imagine this first up, uh, up close candle here, right? Was not, imagine this was a down close candle. I would just be using the two consecutive candles as well. This down close candle here, the one that's actually on the screen, it disrupts that formation, right? So I would just want to use, again, this high to this low of these consecutive up close candles, right? And it gives me higher confidence along with everything that's going on over here, the hourly immediate rebalance, this breaker, 1150 macro, was used to begin to spool to buy side, right? On this retracement, like I said, this we, we shouldn't come back down into this deep because we've already spent so much time into it, all right? And then again, you can see we eventually do get buy side. We don't get um, high of day here, but you can see as well, what did we say at the beginning? Negative 2.5 is a place where price could reverse. So I don't know why my fibs do this. I don't know if it happens with anyone else, but sometimes... Like, so look at this, negative 2.5 is 45.33.50. And I think to close this candle is that as well, exactly. Close, yeah, 45.33.50, all right? But sometimes with the fibs, for some reason, it looks like it's like just off, but it's actually the exact value. But again, this is why you watch those negative 2.5 levels. So if, I, if we were looking for continuation, I would have wanted to see expansion through here, right? And us not slow down here, okay? You can also see we got this buy side above as well. That's swing high. All right, so really, really uh, good action for along after, obviously, that gross chop in the morning. All right, but let me go to NASDAQ super quick. So I'll pull up that chart for everyone here. Give me one second. And this is going to show why I favored longs even more from the open, before the open. So again, I wish I still had it on my chart, I do, okay. So first of all, with NASDAQ, this is an hourly chart and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the left over here, but you guys probably know, this is what we were watching earlier in the week. Jeez, it was a long time ago. But this was that liquidity void. So I'm gonna delete it real quick. But this is where there was no delivery of price. So you can see at the start of the week, or what, what day was it? Was it Wednesday? Yeah. So Wednesday, we've completed this. Oh, my bad. My bad. Did I, uh, I forgot to change the uh, screen. My fault. My fault. Sorry, everyone. Okay. You guys should be able to see it now. Thank you, uh, Star Lord. All right. But this is that liquidity void, right? So we've completed this objective on Wednesday. So again, on the hourly chart, 
Are there any inefficiencies above market price? No, we've completed the liquidity void. Are there any in this fractal, or I say this range, below market price? No, there's none. Obviously, we have this large one down here, but for the same reasons um, I explained on the S&P, we start to see price being supported up here and it gives me, you know, the thinking, the logic that we're not going to go down here and get this today at least. All right. But once we look on the 15 minute chart, what do we see? I posted this before open. Okay. This was the inefficiency right here. I'll delete it so you can see. Look right here. Inefficiency with a session high right below it. So that's a higher probability liquidity pool. So as long as we're not absolutely dumping right into this hourly busy, I'm pretty confident that this is going to get delivered into. It's also a place where we could sell off. And again, I didn't catch a short, so I'm not trying to say I did or anything, but this was the only inefficiency. Yes, we have this one here, but we've already delivered that. Okay. And obviously we have these relative equal highs. You can see we barely got those ones, but if it is going to be a full stop run, we want to see it be deeper. So if we want to see this get ran a little deeper, where would it go? Right here to this inefficiency in this Wednesday PM session high. Okay. In the morning, where's the inefficiency in here? None, none, none. But there's what? There's a swing low here in this 15 minute, the rest of this 15 minute busy. Okay. So you see how this is on Thursday at 145. This 15 minute candle came just about halfway into this, but the bottom portion of that is still imbalanced. Okay. You can see we're wicking through that, but the bodies are telling the story. And of course, what occurs? We get above this uh, structure, right? We take off and if we're bullish to this inefficiency in this high here, what do we want to see? We want to see price not respect this bearish breaker. We want to see price not respect this SIBI here or this SIBI here until our objective is met. Okay. But again, the main framework and it's the most simple thing that ICT teaches is that price moves for liquidity or inefficiency. This was the only really clear inefficiency above market price with this session high right below it. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to mention on. Yeah. So just again, real quick, low, high, lower, low. This is that breaker and I'm using, right? This is the A to B leg, low, high. That's the A to B leg. You can use the entirety of that A to B leg, or you can refine it as well to just the consecutive up close candles. All right, so that's right around this buy side liquidity pool. This is that, I believe this is actually a five minute refined SIBI. Let's go check it out. Yep, so see, I should have these borders a different color because my the wicks are black. And what am I doing? It could be all for now. You can see that's that inefficiency right there. Obviously, as well as this 15 minute SIBI. That's that session high Wednesday, that should say Wednesday, Wednesday session high. Okay. But then we come up to negative one standard deviation, this buy side. Okay. But we have support from this breaker as well as this inversion. So this was a good example of the inversion model. And this is a five minute chart, right? You guys know I execute on one minute. But if this is our discount or bullish PD array that we want to see support price, the logic behind the inversion model is that typically, so say we have a limit order, right? At the high of this breaker or mean threshold. Obviously you wouldn't have got filled in this case, but just for example purposes. On that delivery, by extension, so price is going to have to drop. We're going to have to buy it while price is dropping. On that delivery down to our entry, there's usually a SIBI created, right? Because this aggressive movement downwards, it's just coming into an area where we expect 
price to find support. But the aggressive movement downwards, by extension, the SIBI that gets created, that's just used to trap shorts to think we're reversing. So once we close back above this, that's the final confirmation that it's likely that we're going to go higher and attack buy side. Okay, so we close above it here. We wick into it, right? And then let's look deeper into that five minute inversion. Okay, so again, we close above it at 1255. So 1255 is right here. So that's when we can start to utilize and look for these algorithmic signatures. So what is the signature here? One, the bodies are respecting the high of this five minute inversion. But two, more importantly, we're failing to get down to CE of this five minute inversion. And we have this one minute inversion as well. But that's not the main thing, but again, it's good to note there. But there's no inefficiencies here, right? None here, none here, none here. There's one here, but we've already rebalanced it here. And then we have that SIBI become an inversion. And more importantly, this five minute. After we wick into the five minute inversion and get this signature, what occurs? We get an order block, we get a fair value gap. So multiple PD arrays that are likely to support price. Okay. So you can see, I know it's, it can be confusing, especially if you're, um, you're just starting out with ICT, but if you mark your journals up like this and mark your charts up like this every day, every trading day after close, you're going to start to see these things more and more real time when you're watching live candles print. Okay. And obviously you can see we got this buy side here and then previous day PM session high. And we wicked just above CE of that 15 minute SIBI. All right. So lastly, Let's go to dollar and then I'll go read through chat some of the questions. So you guys should be able to see dollar now. Let me know if you can, but I spoke about this earlier in the week and this morning. Um, again, you can see that, so I'm going to delete this here. But you can see that this low here technically was purged here, but just by a little bit. But we expect stop runs to be deep, okay? So dollar was bearish today, and we can see that we did obviously run those a little deeper. But this was my interest that aided in my um, long bias. So if we're long indices, we want to see dollar do what? Sell, okay? So we have this inversion here. This is another algorithmic signature. We just tap up into it. So this was a busy price has sold through it. So it's been offered what buy side and sell side. So it should be balanced. So once it comes back up into this, we want to see failure to get to CE or if it does reach CE rejection. Okay. We wick into it. You can also see we have this little inefficiency there, little sibby there, but best case, this becomes what? A breakaway gap. Why would this become a breakaway gap? Someone tell me, someone take a guess in the chat. Now it's not all the time this becomes breakaway, but why, why is the likelihood of this becoming a breakaway gap increased? Right, because we've already had buy side and sell side. So if we're right about our sell side draw down here, right? This low, this low, this low. If we're correct about our sell side, our bearish bias, this has already had both sides of delivery. So why would price need to get back up into here? Again, it's permissible just because we come back up and wick into it doesn't mean we can't sell off, right? But best case scenario in terms of speed, confidence in our setup, okay? We wanna see this remain open. Right? Because those algorithmic signatures, failure to get to CE or getting to CE and finding rejection, by extension of that logic, this is above CE. This is the upper portion of this inversion here. Okay, so it very well could have done this. Get my arrow tool. It very well could have done this and then sold off still. But we would still want to see the majority of this remain open. Okay? Does that make sense, everyone? And again, 
just because you see an inversion doesn't mean that every fair value gap within the upper portion or if you're uh if you're bullish the lower portion remain open just because you see an inversion doesn't mean that's going to happen you need the context but this is best case scenario okay so again this bearish order flow in dollar aided in the confidence of my long bias in indices all right and then real quick 15 minute you can see we sweep these highs here okay but we're respecting on a closing basis this 15 minute inefficiency and now if we were watching and entering those longs around 1 p.m for indices what's happening around that same time here right we tick below those lows but again we want to see a deeper stop run okay to, to wipe out any longs that we're still safe there right we come back up to short-term premium this and again i need to start just by default making these borders um lighter color so you can see the wicks but this was a busy same logic we came through it so it's had both sides of delivery again best case what do we expect this to be a breakaway gap okay but we're having a, essentially just bearish order flow right the discount pd rates the bullish pd rates are failing to support price that's what we want to see when we're bullish in indices and obviously we continue to sell off here All right this occurs at 12 30 right selling through at one All right, again, you can see this is a five minute chart. Inversion there. All right, just wicked up into it barely and sold off. So the morning was very, very choppy, but today was a good example of just a reminder that price only goes to those two things, liquidity and or inefficiency. So you're just looking to where price is efficient or inefficient. And you're looking for clear swing highs or swing lows around those levels, those inefficiencies, okay? So let me read some of the chat. Yeah, I entered CNJ. I entered that long around one. I don't know if you entered the call late or something, but um, we kind of walked through that. With that one hour... Um, immediate rebounds and then 15 and five minute breaker power trade the standard deviation that was i don't know if you saw the breaker video i posted but it's just the a to b like of a um breaker okay so if this is your breaker formation bullish breaker in this case this first leg low to high that's your a to b like so i'm just taking my fib from this low to high, that first price leg. All right. Primo actual word word. Yeah, my bad everyone too. I haven't, uh, I wasn't really in main chat today. Oh, dope. One hour uh, market maker by model, nice. Um, Nico said, what's the best macro time in my opinion? Um, there isn't a favorite one. In terms of um in terms of like accuracy i will say i guess if i had to choose a favorite one it's just going to be the 950 to 1010 or 1050 to 1110 but that's just because that's what i'm really looking for my trades but the macros functions the same no matter what um which macro it is okay power trader said can you show that hourly p03 again so it's just the give me one second pulling up yes again so again, this is just 1 p.m. Where are you? You're right here. All right. So see here, 1 p.m., if you can see this light uh, gray line that's coming up right here. This is a one-minute chart, but this is the 1 p.m. open. 
Okay. So we open here. This is the opening price. Right, right there, that red line. Then we make a low right here. So it's open, low, high, close. Where's the low formed? The high of that wick. The hourly immediate rebounds right here. So that's a signature we want to see. Right, and we're also, we've already described it, but the five minute, 15 minute breaker, five minute BPR, okay. This higher probability liquidity pool up here with this negative two standard deviation is A to B like here, but more specifically, the consecutive up close candles. All right. Oh, CNJ, my bad. Uh, would you would you prefer the chop structure gets cleared completely and look for breaker inversion entry? What do you think about the eleven twenty two entry on Nasdaq? I'll pull it up. Eleven twenty two. So I'm assuming you're entering. Okay, so it, again, uh, CNJ, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like you're using this breaker. And I'm guessing that you're using this inversion. Correct me if I'm wrong, CNJ, but are you using that inversion or the one below it? There's two here. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is actually a decent setup. But I know, I know your question. I'm just, I kind of forget if you said you did or not. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm, I don't blame yourself. Like, uh, it is harder to hold, especially like you see this chop all morning. It's hard to hold once you finally get a setup, right? During the seek and destroy. Um, you can enter down here, as, again, as long as you can frame risk. Best case though, I would wait for the structure to be cleared. Um, or if you're just, if you enter down here, you really want to clear the structure. You don't really want to see us come back down into it too deep, right? So again, I've spoken about it before, but like, again, I'm going to delete these things. But with the BPRs like this, so it's not the traditional like sell side, the actual fair value gap BPRs. And give me a second. I'll make this look less aggressive. So if this was the range that we found ourselves in all morning, so we think that this general or air, general, excuse me, area is balanced. We really don't want to see price get back down to 50% once we clear it. And if it does just barely whip down there and then take off, because obviously just like any other inversion or balanced price range, we don't want to see it respect that, um, or excuse me, disrespect that 50% level, right? So once we clear it here, we don't come back. And that's this black line here. We don't come back to 50%. And ICT has said too, you don't really want to see it get back too much below the 75%. So you can see here, we're just wicking below it. We do have one body, one, one, one minute body close below it. But see how I'm just taking this high to low, this dealing range from the morning, this chop that we assume that our analysis is balanced. And I just have my quadrants. All right, so we don't really wanna see that, see price get back below there that much and definitely not below 50%. Does that make sense? So yes, you can, and yes, I do enter down here, like you were saying on this breaker and inversion, um, especially if I'm confident in the draw. So today I was pretty confident in the draw. Um, being buy side to that 15 minute, to this 15 minute SIBI here with this high as we already talked about. Um, but if you do enter there, if you're in profit here, I would just be monitoring the 75% of the general area of that choppy balance structure from the morning. And then um, definitely the 50% level, you don't really wanna see price get back down below there. Okay. Would you consider the time for this entry when there are a lot of chops in the morning. I saw this long entry to around 12 one because it's noon. Now you can like, I'll take setups between 12, between 12 and one as well. Right. But it all depends on the context because lunch session as ICT teaches runs against those profitable AM shorts. So obviously we had all this chop, but those who made money from 
this, right? This is that original consolidation, right? This is that accumulation here. And then we have this, the reversal here. And we start to start the buy side of the curve. Yeah, CNJ, I, I definitely don't take the majority of my trades during lunch, but if like the, if I get a good setup during lunch, that is kind of based around that um, idea that price can spool against profitable traders. And as long as I can frame risk, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, Cozy, if it's seeking destroy in the morning, it's best to just wait for price to become clear during lunch or PM. Because that's what that seek and destroy accumulation is. It's designed to just generate the liquidity and get everyone guessing both directions before making the actual move. Yeah, and get everyone scared to stop everyone out before they make the actual move so everyone's scared to get back in. So you can be right about the draw, but they'll just stop you out and scare you in the chop before. Good point. Okay. The difference between immediate rebalance and implied fair value gap. 50% right of this wick. I didn't mean to grab that, excuse me. But it would be like 50% of this wick. And again, I don't use this that much, but it is similar in the sense, right? So with like the implied, it's kind of just an area you can watch for if like we're returning to an implied, but like this is still the immediate rebound. So like here, I would still want to see if I'm bullish price take off in the next two candles or this candle, right? But like the immediate rebounds, you would be watching like on a return. If we had structure here and then came back down, you could just monitor like the gap between, or there is no gap, but the implied gap between 50% of each of these wicks. So you take 50% of this wick, 50% of this wick, and then you'd watch to see how price acts in that little imaginary gap, right? Yeah, and we can, with large wicks, you can do quadrants as well. So if ICT says teach wicks as gap, treat wicks as gaps, and we have large wicks, we can use for uh, the, the quadrants as well to look for those algorithmic signatures. But again, it's not something that you have to do, right? These are just things that you can add to your arsenal. You don't, don't confuse yourself if you're just getting started. Uh, Wafik, uh, I have a video on that I'll send to you because we could talk about that forever. Um, we're just looking for the quadrants just to see if there's any support. It's not a place where I just note the quadrant of a wick. I don't just buy it like 25 or 75%. Um, I need context around it and I'm just seeing if there's support or no support from those levels. Okay. So just like anything like immediate rebounds, it's just another tool, right? Another trick to have up your sleeve to watch price. So just start to journal it, right? There was a good example again on that hourly chart today. And if you haven't watched that video, I'll send it again after this, but it's a super powerful tool. And that's why I only did part one of that immediate rebounds video, because there's so many different ways you can use it on so many different time frames. All right. All right, cool. But besides that, um, I'm going to hop off. I hope everyone had a good week, a good day. Hope everyone learned something. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Um, but yeah, um, I will talk to you guys soon. I'll still be in chat. I have some other work to do um, for you guys who are in the call. But today was a good day. Even with that morning shot, we can still see the footprints of the algorithm, the signatures of the algorithm. But I'll still be around. Um, and again, yeah, sorry, uh, I wasn't in chat today. Just a little uh, personal data lock in, dial in on my own trading. But we'll we'll be back at it next Monday. Um, but I appreciate you guys and gals, and I will talk to you guys next week. And have a good weekend. Later.